This lesson deals with half wave and full wave rectifiers. You can find these notes in the ECE 302 ebook in chapter 2 starting on page 41. Diodes can be used to convert AC voltages to DC voltages. We need this for electronic devices like radios, TVs, DVD players, laptops, really anything that's electronic for the most part needs a DC voltage. Diodes used to perform this task are called rectifiers. We'll first take a look at what's called a half wave rectifier with a signal diode, an AC source, and a load. Let's replace the real diode with an ideal diode in a battery whose value is VD on. To analyze this type of circuit with an input that's not specified but can be any value, let's take a look at when the ideal diode is off and figure out what V sub I needs to be equal to. Diode 1 is off, then this node voltage here needs to be greater than this node voltage because if this was a resistor, current would then want to flow in this direction and that would be the off case. Looking to get the cathode at a greater potential than the anode. What's the potential at the cathode? Well, it's going to be this drop plus this drop. No current flowing, so we have VD on plus zero times R sub L. That's this equation right here, and it's just equal to VD on. And what's the anode? Well, it's just equal to V sub I. When the cathode is greater than the anode, the diode is off, and under these conditions, the output voltage is equal to zero current times R sub L, or just zero. If the diode's off when V sub I is less than VD on, then it must be on when the inequality is the other way, because there's only two possible states for the diode. Now when it's on, it's a short circuit. If we go around the loop, the rise in voltage equals the drop of minus VD on, minus zero plus V sub I. And that's this equation right over here. Let's represent this graphically. Here I've got an input that's a sine wave. I'll show it as a dotted line. And when the input is greater than VD on, then current starts to flow, and the output's equal to the input minus one diode drop. And that's this equation right here. But the maximum value of the sine wave we would be at that value minus one diode drop. Now when we're less than VD on for the input, the diode is off, no current flows, and we have zero here, and we have zero here. In the design sense, what a half rectifier does is it takes the waveform and chops off part of it and pushes down the peak by a value of VD on. Note that we started with a waveform that had an average value of zero. We're above this axis as much as we're below it. And now we have a waveform that has an average value that's not zero. And that's our definition of DC. Let's check out this circuit with P-Splice. We have a five volt input at 100 hertz and connect that to a diode and a resistor. The resistor has a value, say, of 1K. And the diode will just be our default example in our textbook of an I sub S of two nanoamps and an eta equal to two. Our line editor version of P-Splice, we're looking at a title, a dot end, a circuit description, and then some command lines. We'll pick the final value here to be at least two cycles. So one over 100 hertz is 10 milliseconds. And multiply that by two, that's this one. Divide this by 200, and that gives me the print step. We'll start printing output at zero, and I'll make the ceiling step equal to the print step. And when I do that, I get a nice smooth curve of at least 200 data points. If V sub D on was 0.7, then I expect the peak to be at five volts minus 0.7 or 4.3. Let's see if it does that. Just then I put everything on one graph. I picked a dotted line here for V sub I, and you can see that it's a five volt sine wave with a period of 10 milliseconds, which would mean its frequency is one over that or 100 hertz. Here's our peak going up, coming back down again. We're kind of chopping off the bottom of the waveform and throwing it away and pushing the top down by one diode drop. Our peak here is five volts, and so subtracting one diode drop, we get 4.2456. So we can use that to calculate VD on at the bottom of the page. And VD on turns out to be close to 0.7, but it's actually 0.7544. In our last example of a half-wave rectifier, we basically threw away half the waveform. Is there some way that we could recover that or use that? And the answer is yes, with a thing called a full-wave rectifier. There are several schemes for doing this, one of which is called the bridge rectifier. In fact, it looks like a Wheatstone bridge, but it doesn't behave anything like that. In our examples, when we're looking at a real diode, we've been modeling it with a ideal diode in a battery. It takes a little time to redraw everything. Is there some way just to kind of look at this and handle it just by itself? Let's try the following approach. If I think about this non-ideal diode as having a piecewise linear representation, again, this is an approximation to the actual nonlinear exponential curve, we could say that the diode is on whenever the current is greater than or equal to zero. And we could say that the diode is off whenever the voltage across the diode is less than or equal to VD on. And the transition point is VD on and zero amps. Let's take a look at when the input voltage is positive. When it's positive, how would current want to flow? It would want to flow out of the source 
And if these were resistors, it would want to flow this way and this way. But these are diodes, so current can only flow this way. Can't go this way. Comes here, and that current has to return back to the source. So it has to go back this way, back this way. I would guess that when the input's positive, maybe big enough, that current would want to flow through diodes two and four, and that one and three would be off. Let's see if that works. So think of V sub S as just being a DC voltage. It's changing in value, but, but basically like a DC source. Here I have my diodes two and four conducting, or I can leave the source and come back to it. And what's true about the output? Let's go around the loop. The rise in voltage would be V out. The drop would be minus VD on, plus V sub S, and then minus VD on back to where we started. V out is equal to V sub S minus two VD on when current is flowing. For the output to be greater than zero, in other words, when current is flowing, this equation needs to be greater than or equal to zero, and that implies that V sub S is greater than two VD on, which makes sense. This voltage is increasing, and at some point I get enough voltage to forward bias those two diodes, roughly 0.7 plus 0.7, and current begins to flow. So what happens when the input goes negative? When it's going negative, you can think of it as a positive voltage in this direction, and current wants to come out of the only source we have and provide energy for the things that can only absorb power. Can't go this way, but it could go this way. Can't go this way, so it comes back here, goes through here, and it comes back to the source. It can't spin around the loop here. Whatever it leaves has to come back. Otherwise, we destroy charge. For our second guess, for the input being negative, we would think that diodes three and one would be on, and two and four would be off. Let's try that. Here's my V sub S, original definition, plus and minus here, but think of this again as a positive number in this direction, negative in this direction. We can current would want to flow this way back through here. Let's figure out what V out is and what kind of conditions we have to have on it. The rise in voltage would equal the drops around the loop, so V out is equal to minus VD on, minus V sub S, and minus VD on back to where we started. That's this expression right here. V out is equal to minus V sub S minus two VD on. For current to flow, that means that the output voltage is greater than or equal to zero. That implies that minus V sub S is greater than or equal to two VD on. Multiply through by a minus sign, that flips the inequality. That means V sub S needs to be less than or equal to minus two VD on. In other words, it needs to be negative enough for this to happen. I'm trying to think about a circuit. One thing I found really handy over the years is trying to draw all the waveforms associated with it. it. Gives me a chance to think about what it does. And again, kind of as a word description so that as I design things, I can apply these word descriptions to put new circuits together. I've got an input V sub S, goes up, goes down, and generally it's the same positive as it is negative. And I'll call that V sub S maximum and minus V sub S maximum. I've got a period T and a half period, and it'll be important as we talk about building a power supply. I showed with this bridge rectifier that when the voltage is positive and large enough, that current flows in this direction, and that the output is equal to the input minus two diode drops. In other words, I just basically push this down, one diode drop now, but two. When that's going on, what's happening with the diodes? Well, diodes one and three are off and two and four are on. But if current is flowing, that means that the voltage across the diode is a VD on. Well, initially we start out, don't have enough voltage to turn those on, and no current flows, and then we eventually get a constant voltage for diodes two and four. Now the current that flows in two and four is the same as the current that flows in R sub L. Just take this and divide by R sub L, and you'll get the current. Initially it's zero, but we'll eventually go up to the peak of the input, minus two diode drops, divided by R sub L. So what about diodes one and three? Well, they're off, so there's zero current. But there is a voltage across diodes one and three. Let's see if figure that out. Okay, let's label the voltage across diode one. Of course, the voltage across here in this first half cycle, this is equal to V sub D on. Let's solve for this voltage. So this voltage, V sub D one, is equal to minus V out, minus VD on. To peak, what is V out? It's equal to V sub S maximum minus two VD on. I'm gonna get minus V sub S M, then a minus a minus two VD on, plus two VD on, and then minus VD on. V plus one VD on. So this is the voltage across the diode one or three. Did it for one, but it's the same for three. It's equal to the negative peak of my input voltage plus one diode drop. This is important because when there is a breakdown voltage, you can make sure we pick our diode such that we don't conduct. We're assuming that this diode is an open circuit. Now let's repeat this for the next half cycle. 
happened here with the positive voltage, the current went this way. With the negative voltage, the current still goes through the load the same direction. It's like we've got switches being open and closed, letting the current go in only one direction. We get the same waveform again with the same result. We have the peak minus two diode drops. When this is happening, diodes one and three are on. Once we get negative enough, current that flows in one and three is going to be the voltage here divided by R sub L, same as last time. And the current in the diode that's not conducting, which is two and four, it's equal to zero. You do the same technique again and solve for the voltage across diodes two and four, but you get the same result. What's happening with the full wave rectifiers, we're taking this bottom section and literally flipping it over. Now there's a little bit of a loss. Now if V sub S maximum were a pretty big number, like say 50 volts, you wouldn't really notice this. It'd be pretty small. But there is a little bit of a pushing down. Sometimes this is called a absolute value circuit because the voltage is only positive at the output. Note again that we started with an average value of zero. And we've now created a waveform that has an average value that's not zero. Now compared to the half wave rectifier, we have about twice the value given the same period. We're able to increase the DC voltage by not throwing away this piece. Throwing all these waveforms out, I have sort of a summary of this circuit does in terms of just a series of pictures that I can describe and as to what the circuit's doing. Let's take our previous example and now use a full wave rectifier where we had a half wave rectifier. Same input, a five volt source at 100 hertz. Now between nodes one and three, and a load of 1K between two and ground, you have a title, dot end, and then these command lines, I mean the model, the transient analysis, and dot probe. What probe does is it gives you all voltages and all currents. You can specify a smaller set if you have a pretty big file, but in general, we're just asked to give us all possible voltages and currents. If we estimate the drop across, that would be 0.7, and if I have a five volt input, and then I would expect my peak to be pushed down from five volts to five volts minus 1.4 or 3.6 volts. And the current that'd be flowing through the diodes when they're on would be 3.6 volts divided by the 1K resistor that's here. Let's see how close we come. I wanna check my input, make sure it's what I think it is. It's a five volt sine wave with a period of 10 milliseconds, which would be 100 Hertz. The voltage V2 is my output voltage. I see here I've got the full wave rectification and you can see here, there's we call a dead zone. I purposely pick the voltage of my source to be only five volts so you could see the effect of the diode drop because we've got two diode drops to contend with. You could use this to calculate the drop across the diode. It's gonna be the peak minus the actual value divided by two is 0.74415. Close to 0.7, but here's the exact value with this particular value of eta and I sub s. Plot here the voltage from one to two, and this is node voltage one minus node voltage two, which is the voltage across diode two. You can see here it gets forward bias and then it gets shut off. You can see the forward bias thing here is 0.74377, very close to what we hand calculated in the last page. Here we see our minus five volts plus one diode drop, about minus 4.2555. The current in the diode we see going up to about 3.5 milliamps, roughly what we hand calculated. Goes to zero, repeats itself. Roughly get the same for diode one and actually diode three. It's gonna be off in the first half cycle, then on. And then off and then on, no current, and then a current flowing. And the value roughly what we had hand calculated, assuming 0.7. Or you can refine that with a more accurate value for V sub dn. And these are half wave and full wave rectifiers.